So as many of you know, it is Autism Awareness Month and <clears throat> I am in Minneapolis doing this and I have been struck lately by a lot of when I go through something, I notice my students go through it, it's called change and looking through processes and everything else and one of the things I've been reflecting on the last couple of days is finding one's power. And you think when you have it, you think, oh, I have it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. But it's... Last night I was struck by something very interesting happened. I was with students working. And I grabbed someone's hand. Not in a bad way. But in a way that I gave my power I told her, I have power over you. And it sort of affected me the rest of the day. Because it, it opened my mind to something that I've been mowing over the last couple of days too, is that your story matters. And sometimes we forget that these kids are kids, you know, deep down, and that they have feelings and that they're human being and somebody my friend Mike Stella he's a cool friend of mine posted my life you know you can do this and I've been reading a lot about Solik which is an ancient tradition of something and a lot about finding your inner power and finding your strength and knowing that you are stronger than you think you are and for so many years I believed that lie that I wasn't very strong and that I wasn't going to be able to do the things I wanted to do and it struck me today that I am strong. I am going to do this. This is going to be okay. I mean, I'm going back to the same job I had this year. Same school. They want me back. You know, I'm going to do summer school. I'm going to work with these kids. I'm going to do summer camp. I'm going to do all of this stuff. And that my story does matter. That I have a lot of tools to give. Because sometimes I was afraid, like these students are. Well, these kids... These kids can read your body language and they can read the sense that you're not, you know, they can tell. And as I struggle with finding my own self in all of this, I discovered that the truth lies kind of in between the point that your story matters and it does matter. Go ahead and tell your story. Share, you know, your experiences with people that you love and cherish. And know that those relationships are very brief. You know, I have a friend, my friend Mike and Peggy are suffering from cancer, and I love them both. And they, they taught me that life is so incredibly precious. You don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know what's going to, you know. But it's all beauty. It's all love. And it's all that the story that you tell yourself is not always true. Remember that. Repeat that yourself to yourself every day today. If you're that mantra to yourself that. The story you tell yourself is not always true. I'm going to do that. The story you tell yourself is not always true. You know? In the journey that your story matters, there's a story there. Somebody's got to tell the story. It's going to be you, it's your story. And that's what I've wondered about it. It is your, well, it is your story. That is nobody else's story but yours. You know, your story. Nobody else can tell it. <laughs> Nobody else can share it the way you can share it. Nobody else can have your experience. They may tell you, I don't like that story. And I may don't like the way you're doing that. I don't like what you're doing. But don't listen to them. They're wrong. It's your story. It's the way you do it. The way you teach. It's the way you learn. I'm learning a whole new process at work. And it's incredibly scary to learn how to, you know, come up power into a 14-year-old who's fighting with you about having power but they want that they need that to know that you're a safe person who has power over them and that in a sense it's like protection you're protecting them from the evil that they live in their lives I work with students who don't have great have really crappy home lives and yet our job as human beings is to nurture these kids to tell them that their story is really valuably important to the conversation and sometimes 
and I'm, I'm with him. I'm gonna raise, you know, raise my hand here and tell you that I'm part of that. Sometimes we don't teach that. And sometimes we're so busy teaching them academics that we forget to teach them emotional, social warning, and how to be human beings. And they want these skills. They can't talk. We have to teach it to them. They're gonna want it, don't worry. I don't have to like force it on them, but I can show by example how to be a better human being by teaching and learning and showing them what their skills are. I'm not a musician. It has to be the whole collective, the whole the whole generation. It has to be the whole group organization and people carrying each other on each shoulders going, we can change the system for the better. And that's the thing about your story matters. It keeps coming back to me. There's power in our story. There's power in me sitting in that with that student working and some academic skill with maybe mean it to that kid. But as one of my colleagues said to me yesterday, it doesn't matter what the data sheet says. It doesn't matter what the sheet says. What matters is that they're getting the skill. So focusing on the plays and you know, focusing on, you know, you, you sh using short, simple, sweet words with them. And that's what I've learned is that you sometimes don't need to say big words to people. To say I love you is the biggest word you can say to somebody today. And sorry I went on for a really long time in this video, but tomorrow I'm going to talk about the idea of opening up your story to somebody else in a way that's a safety environment. Thanks. You guys have a great day. I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, you guys rock.